Canberra now joining us live is the Industry and Science Minister Ed Husick. Minister, good to see you. Uh, so don't clam up here like uh, Richard Miles did this morning on, uh, on AUKUS and pivot to next week's official announcement, but I'll try anyway. Peter Malinowska still seeking assurance. Uh, the ironclad commitment is still there that the subs will be built in Australia. Can you give that assurance? Uh, you know, you, you wanted me to open up and I, I would love to make a whole series of career-limiting <laughs> moves and give you details. Ain't happening. Uh, I think uh, the PM has flagged, as you have broadcast here on Sky News, that uh, a lot more of these details will uh, become clearer uh, next week. But what is obvious here is uh, any government's got to take national security and defence very seriously. It's the starting threshold issue uh, that needs to be dealt with. We recognise that defence capability isn't just about the here and now. It's about what we need longer term, taking into account what's happening in the world today. I heard the comments from Arthur Sinodinas, who's done an important job for the nation as our ambassador there in Washington, and Arthur Sinodinas made the point this is uh, about being able to signal the seriousness of the country to maintain its, its defence and have some offence capability. And uh, given that the deal struck by another government we now have stewardship for, we take very seriously and working with partners like the US and the UK to deliver that type of technology, but also to the heart of your question around uh, industry capability onshore is something I think a lot about. There's an expectation clearly that we've got a lot of great talent, a lot of great firms that can contribute, and we want to make sure that they get a slice of the action. And again, this will uh, more of this will be discussed in the coming weeks. OK. The National Reconstruction Fund hangs in the balance and runs the risk of being blocked. Have you got the votes that you need, Ed? I'm not in a position to say that. Uh, if I can be absolutely open and direct with you, uh, obviously uh, we secured a major milestone yesterday, getting our $15 billion National Reconstruction Fund supported by the House of Representatives. A lot of people in the House of Representatives get this is a massive investment in manufacturing capabilities for this country. It's a moment of nation building. The only people that didn't get it and voted against manufacturing and blue collar workers in particular were the coalition. The Liberal and National Party, for some reason, decided to, uh, to not back that investment in manufacturing. We take it now to the Senate. We've got to work through a crossbench. Clearly, with the Greens on board, it makes our job a lot easier. But I don't take the view that we just get the bare minimum of numbers and then dust the hands and move on. As I said, this is nation building. This is about ensuring that we get up off the mat. We've got some of the worst manufacturing self-sufficiency stats in the OECD, Pete. We've got a big job to do and I want people across the parliament to feel they've got a sense of ownership in the fund, that they know this is something that will build something good for the country longer term and we want to be able to take people's our views on board. OK, so will you give in to Jackie Lambie or honour your agreement with the Greens? Uh, I, I have to say, you know, if we've made a deal, my view is you honour the deal. Uh, you can't go and chop and change. And uh, with respect to, to Jackie and to, to, Le uh, to Tammy, if I may say, uh, I get where they're coming from, but to give them the assurance, similar to what I said to the Greens, I'm utterly consistent. This fund is about value-add. The Prime Minister wants us to do more value-add in this country and build great jobs in manufacturing as a result. Uh, our intent is not to fund, uh, through a manufacturing fund, the extraction of coal or its transmission or logging of forest. Like, that's not what this fund does. This is about value-add. And so, for us, uh, we, we've been absolutely consistent on that. If the Greens needed that assurance in writing, we were prepared to to give it, but it doesn't mean the end of logging. If states and territories allow that to occur, that will still continue. Coal and gas has still got a big role uh, to play in the foreseeable future as we look to net zero. So we, you know, we just work through this stuff practically. Okay. I don't get too worked up about it. But Japan paper giant Nippon, it's going to close Australia's last white paper plant. Will the NRF save mm. those jobs? Uh, it, it depends on what Nippon puts forward. If they've got a new process to, to do what they do in terms of manufacturing, uh, then obviously when the NRF gets stood up and is up and running, uh, they can come forward with a, a business plan about what they want to do. And we want to co-invest with industry, with superannuation and, and other players to make that pool of capital available so people can stay, and particularly Australians, Pete, 
You've heard the stories from time to time where firms leave our country because they felt like they didn't have the support they needed from investors to turn something into reality, but they've been able to get it from other investors offshore or even other governments. And I think we can do a lot better. Australians know we can do a lot better. And having the capital, the growth capital available for manufacturing onshore is a big deal. And we want that to work across the seven priority areas we've okay. announced. Back to the Senate. There's a fight emerging yep. between the Greens and Lydia Thorpe. Do you have her on side? Uh, again, we're working through with the, uh, with the individual crossbenchers. They will make their announcements on their position. I will not make them for them. But I remain committed to working with people, taking okay. on board views. We're not going to agree with everything. But they can rest assured that, one, we're here to listen, here to work with people where we can. And if we make a deal, we honour deals. So how many chats have you had with her? Or is her vote a given? Uh, no, it's not a given. I don't, I don't take that with anyone. Uh, and we've, we will be meeting in the coming week. And I've had meetings, for example, with Jackie Lambie uh, and with Tammy uh, as well in the last uh, 24 hours. We'll have uh, meetings with others as well in due course. Uh, we'll, you know, got to get through and, and work through things. But I'm very confident that those meetings will happen. And I'm also confident constructive dialogue will occur uh, and uh, remain hopeful that we'll get this through the Senate. All right, Ed Husick, uh, appreciate your time. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.